Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Hamish Hodder and in this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about interest rates and how interest rates affect the stock market. Interest rates can seem like this scary topic but I assure you even if you know absolutely nothing about interest rates right now, by the end of this video you should have a decent understanding of what they are and how they affect your stocks. I'm going to start out by talking about what we mean by interest rates because there's the general definition of interest rates and then there's what we mean by interest rates when you hear it on Bloomberg or CNBC and they're talking about interest rates or the official cash rate or the bond price. So I'm going to explain what we're talking about when we talk about that and then I'm going to go on and explain what the effect is of the interest rates on your stock prices. What happens when interest rates go up and what happens when interest rates go down. So what are interest rates? So if you don't already know, interest rates are the price that you pay for using someone else's money. So the simplest example I can think of is when you go to the bank to get a loan, you have to pay interest payments on top of paying down how much you've loaned out. And in the same way, when you have a credit card, you have to make credit card payments because you're paying to use someone else's money. However, when we talk about interest rates with regard to the stock market, we're usually talking about the official cash rate. The official cash rate is the interest rate set by the Federal Reserve. And you can think of the Federal Reserve as the bank for the banks. If banks need to loan out some money, they can go to the Federal Reserve, which is controlled by the government, and they can get a loan out at the interest rate that is set at the official cash rate. So then why do we even have this official cash rate? And essentially, the Federal Reserve uses this official cash rate to control inflation. Inflation refers to the increases in prices of goods and services over time. If we have too much inflation, it's bad. And if we have negative inflation, also known as deflation, that's also bad. So the Federal Reserve tries to keep the inflation rate between 2 and 3%. I'll talk in depth about inflation in another video, but all you need to know here is that a little bit of inflation is a healthy amount. So how does this official cash rate uh, change inflation? Well, when we have high interest rates, it discourages spending, which reduces inflation. And in the opposite direction, when we have lower interest rates, it encourages spending, which increases inflation. So then how does the official cash rate affect us as stock market investors? Well, if there's one thing that you take away from this video, take this away from it. It's that interest rates change the willingness of individuals and businesses to borrow money. And this is important because it affects the amount that businesses invest and it affects the amount of growth that businesses experience. Stocks are affected when interest rates change in either direction, up or down. So let's first talk about what happens when interest rates go down. So when interest rates go down, borrowing money gets cheaper and then people are more likely to borrow money. And what this means is people spend more, which means businesses earnings go up and businesses grow more quickly in general. All of this has a positive effect on the stock prices. This will cause stock prices to go up. There is also another effect that happens when interest rates are low and this is related to the bond market. So basically, investors can choose between investing in equities, which means they're investing in part ownership of a company, like buying a stock or buying a private business, or they can invest in debt, which is where you loan out money and you get that money back with interest on top of it. And that can be in the form of a bond. You can also buy government bonds, which means you're essentially lending money to the government. And this sort of lending is considered risk-free because there is a very, very, very small chance that the government won't pay you back. So when interest rates are low, lending money is less desirable because you're not going to make much back on your principal. So for example, if interest rates are at 1%, if I lend out $100 at 1%, I'm only going to get $101 back in a year's time. And if you compare that to interest rates of say 10%, if I lend out $100, I'm going to get 110 back. So lower the interest rates are, the less desirable it is to lend out money. So what that means in reality is that when interest rates are low, investors are more willing to invest in stocks over bonds because investing in debt is not really worth it because the interest rates are so low. So they seek out these higher returns in the stock market. And all of these extra investors in the stock market pushes prices up. So this is the situation that's happening right now. In the US, I think interest rates are at 1.75%. In Australia, it's 1.25. So this is incredibly low. And because this is so low, it's caused a lot of people to flood into the stock market to look for higher returns because they can't get those kind of returns from the bond markets. So what this has done is it's increased prices and it's made a lot of stocks very expensive over the last couple of years. 
The Federal Reserve in both the US and Australia has recently been increasing interest rates very slowly. So let's have a talk about what happens when interest rates go up. So when interest rates go up, borrowing money is more expensive and that means that people are less likely to borrow money. Individuals spend less, which means that businesses earn less in their earnings reports and businesses also invest less because it's more expensive to make investments when borrowing money is at a higher interest rate. So both of these have a negative impact on stock prices. And then there's the bond market effect. And as I said earlier, investors have this choice between in equities, which is stocks, and debt, which is bonds. If interest rates are higher, then lending money becomes more desirable. So as I said before, when interest rates are low, investors look to the stock market to get a better return because interest rates um, on the bond market aren't giving a high enough yield. However, when the reverse is true and interest rates are rising, bonds are slowly becoming more and more attractive and people will pull their money from stocks because the risk isn't worth it and put it into risk-free assets, uh, risk-free debt actually, such as bonds. And when there's less people invested in the stock market, when people are moving their money from the stock market to the bond market, stock prices go down. So what's the bottom line? There is this relationship between stocks and interest rates. However, it's not a direct relationship and we can use it as a general principle and in general, it's what will happen and it's what we'll see in the market. However, when we're talking specifically about stock prices, stock prices depend on investor behavior and we can never accurately predict investor behavior. In my personal opinion, as interest rates continue to rise over the next couple of years, stocks will continue to get more and more expensive and bonds will look more and more attractive to investors. And at some point, there will be a tipping point at which a lot of investors will think that the stock market is too risky and they will move their money into the bond market and we will see a considerable drop of maybe 30 to 50%. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments about the relationship between uh, stocks and, in, and interest rates and how interest rates affect stock prices, uh, leave those comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. We have lots of great videos on entrepreneurship, investing and other personal finance things like how to save money and morning routines. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all that great content. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.